Now this is cool. There's no time for escalators here. I gotta beat that crowd down to the trade show floor here at Cultivate 22, where we are covering every cool new thing we can possibly find. I'm Chris Beatty's editor of Grower Talks Magazine, and um, we have never done a video from Cultivate, but we're gonna give it a try today. There are uh, aisles from 100 to 3,700. Don't know if we can get through all of it, but we're sure gonna give it a try to bring you some cool new products. Come on. Well, you know I love equipment, automation, tools and toys and things that move and uh, increase the efficiency of your greenhouse. And we found it here at Cultivate 22 at the TTA booth where they have, well, it says MIDI flat up there, but it's actually the MIDI multicolor. And the idea, pretty self-explanatory, you can plant multiple colors or multiple varieties in one pot uh, out of as many as six different trays. Now the deal is there, this machine is equipped with 16 grippers. It's uh, configurable to your custom needs so you can have more or less and it'll plant about a thousand plugs per hour per gripper. So this machine could do 16,000 plugs an hour in any kind of configuration into pots, baskets, you know, combos, whatever you want back there. So that's the, uh, the uh, MIDI multicolor from TTA. If you want to know how much it is, about a cool quarter grand will buy you this puppy. Uh, but hey, with that kind of speed, it's worth it. You know, one of the new technologies we've been uh, seeing a bit more of here at Cultivate 22 is vertical farming technologies. And one of our own American companies, Innovative Grower Solutions out of Sycamore, Illinois, which is right around the corner from where I live, um, has taken their, their ebb and flood table system and they've gone up with it. Uh, they've decided to develop an in-house vertical racking system. You might recognize the style that's being used here, pretty much typical vertical shelving like you might see in a big box or you might even have at home, but they've, they make this in-house uh, and developed it nice and sturdy to support their ebb and flood bench systems. The other thing they're offering, which amazed me, is they're making their own LED lights. They're all assembled and tested and engineered, again, right out of Sycamore, Illinois, four by four configuration. This upper one is set up for um, cannabis um, and the lower is set up for uh, flowering plants. Um, they can pretty much do whatever the recipe you'd want. So that's an interesting vertical farming solution from Innovative Growers Equipment here at Cultivate 22. I've been doing a lot of talking, especially webinars on environmental controls lately because uh, the better you control your environment, the better your crop is. And uh, Wadsworth knows this. It's why they came out some years back with their seed platform, simple but really powerful environmental control. Now they have, uh, and this is only a prototype, you're seeing it for the first time, their own soil uh, an uh, analyzer probe. This one uh, is called the seven in one because it will it will uh, read seven different things. It, it'll it'll uh, read the moisture, of the soil, it'll read the temperature of the soil, it'll read the uh, pH of the soil, and the EC of the soil. Those things are critical, but with those, those uh, factors, it can also figure out your NPK. Now, they haven't yet uh, connected this to your fertigation system. Not that that won't be coming in the future, um, but if you know the, uh, the pH and the EC and those other factors, you can calculate NPK and then you can uh, know that the, you might have a problem brewing in your crop before it actually shows up as a, a deficiency. And the nice thing is it's plug and play with the seed platform. Uh, you don't have to go searching for uh, probes uh, and, and wondering if they're gonna work with your system or not. This is gonna be really easy. Again, it's a prototype, so watch for that to come out. The 7-in-1 Soil Analyzer from Wadsworth. Weed control in nurseries. It's a big challenge in the folks at Bayer know that as we're looking for uh, products here at Cultivate 2022, um, I found the Bear Nursery Weed Control Guide for Production Ornamentals. This is a, a booklet that you're going to want to get a hold of. Uh, it's got some great uh, cultural 
um, introduction, I shouldn't say cultural, because uh, you don't want to culture weeds, you want to get rid of them, but ways to prevent weeds, treating growing areas, uh, using pre-emergence, uh, weeds in propagation, weed uh, maintenance, and then it's got some charts through here of the kinds of products that you want to use depending on whether they're containers, um, shrubs, container trees, or field-grown crops. Uh, you can get this from your bear sales representative or a supplier, uh, and they will also eventually have it online in a digital format. That's the Nursery Weed Control for Production Ornamentals Guide from Bear. Very handy. We are here in the Master Tag booth where they are mastering the tag business. They have for a long time. We're at Cultivate 22 where we've seen a lot of house plants and Master Tag has the house plant uh, seller covered with a line of tags that help the house plant customer have a better idea about where they should put that house plant. Um, light is the biggest challenge for consumers. Now this tag will tell them that this plant needs bright light, which means to place in a bright, sunny room. If you've got a medium light plant, you place that in a well-lit room, which is uh, a little bit lower light than a bright, sunny room. And then if you've got a low light plant, it says place in a naturally lit room. And hopefully those more detailed instructions and also these beautiful tags will help the uh, consumer do a better job with their house plants. Now the second thing I wanted to show you in house plants is called the plant passport. This is a cool idea because most typical small tags can't contain very much information, but a lot of foliage and house plants warrant more detailed information because there's just so much cool history and you know where they come from so the plant passport is a hang tag that that um, offers space for more information um, than just you'd get in a regular stick tag for instance here's an example of it the plant is a monstera it gives you the genus monstera and how to pronounce it the species and even what family it is so more information plus you'd open up the tag and find either more cool things and then lastly kind of a, um, a reintroduction uh, or a reminder about a tag com uh, uh, concept that they, they've had for a while now, which is the snap tag. It's two, oops, it's two tags in one. And the idea being that a lot of consumers when they're gardening um, want to have one tag that goes with the plant so they know what it is in the landscape, but they want another one for reference. And the snap tag snaps apart giving you one little tag for the garden. There it is right there. Put that with the plant. And then another piece that you could keep in a little notebook or a, a flower pot or something to remind you what it is that you've bought. So that's the snap tag and a few other concepts here from Master Tag. There's a lot of action around this little 10 by 10 booth here that's from a brand new company. And it's called Plant Pop, and I'm standing with uh, co-founder Josiah Parkerson. Hey, Chris, how's it going? <laughs> Is that a safe title for you, co-founder of Plant Pop, you think? Not really. I'm a representative at most. Uh, who owns the thing? <laughs> so, Art Parkerson, owner of Lancaster Farms. That's your pop? Yes, Is that's my dad. Is pop Plant Pop? No. Uh, <laughs> no. So, the pop in Plant Pop would be popular culture. So, what, at Plant Pop, we want to find and study the intersection of plants and popular culture. So our goal is to find wherever people are doing interesting, cool, creative, innovative, and original things with plants, and we want to document it. So part of what we do is we make creative t-shirts grab, grab, and- Grab, grab, grab the, yeah. uh, grab a couple of those. What's there, at least one or two of those, that's fun. Julia Parkerson, Parkerson over there, working hard. <laughs> so we've got begonia t-shirts. All right, that, that, that logo looks familiar. What am I looking at there? Yes, sir, this is a play on the Patagonia logo. Ah, you see what they did there? So oh. it's a twist on a familiar right. face. How about and then we've got oh, Coleus. Yeah, <laughs> a personal hit with Ken Fisher. He liked it. I used to work yeah. for them, didn't yeah, he? Yeah. Oh, that's very cool. We didn't create it for him. That'd be a little too much bootlicking right. for so, us. So the idea is you're actually selling these. You want, you want uh, garden centers reselling these. You're yes, sir. Yes, we'd like to get them into retail shops. All right. And then your dad is doing some time-lapse videography. Yes, Let's sir. take a quick look at that. Because this is gorgeous stuff. Art, Art not only is a grower and a columnist for my magazine, Grower Talks, but he's a videographer. And what, what are these beautiful videos he's doing? So this is time-lapse photography. Um, we capture 
plants blooming with one picture every approximately five minutes over the course of a few days. And then we compile it and we make compilations of it. Those are stunning. Stunning, and he said he actually wants, is willing to do that for plant companies with their own varieties if they're interested, right? Yes, sir. We would love to create mass appeal for people's new cultivars, new breeds that they're coming out with. We would love to partner with them, but first and foremost, it is art. We would be interested in doing this possibly for somebody's marketing, but the main thing is we want to treat it as the art piece that it is and give it the respect it deserves. That's you know? cool. So plant pop. You can go to plantpop.com. Yes. Uh, you're putting videos out all the time, different yes, kinds. Yes, sir. All the culture. You can order the shirts out there, I yes, think. Yes, sir. So check it out. It's the it's the wave of the future in horticulture. It's right here. I'm looking at it. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I certainly <laughs> hope so. Hey, what in the world's going on here? Somebody is making microgreens and at a rapid pace. We're in the agronomics booth here at Cultivate 22, where I always come to look for really cool machinery. This is a new machine that uh, Agronomics is carrying from a company called Hamel out of Canada, and it's a microgreens harvester. Uh, all surgical steel blades, food grade components, uh, and you see just what a nice job it's doing on this. I heard they sold two machines in the first few minutes uh, to somebody just because they, uh, they saw the job it was doing. But we're going to take a look at a few other innovations here uh, at Agronomics. One of the concepts they're showing here at uh, Agronomics is the use of uh, industrial robots to handle the routine plant movement chores. Uh, why would you, like for instance, plant spacing? We've all seen the plant spacing robots that come out of our industry. Why use an industrial robot like this? Well, first off, they're really not much more expensive than the, uh, the, the ones that were, are custom made for our industry, but they are much more robust and flexible. These things come out of heavy industry. Uh, they're proven, they're tested. And if you watch the, the action of how this moves, it's much more customizable uh, to really do some nice uh, motion for, uh, for whatever you're doing. It can rotate in, really set them down nicely. Uh, Green Circle Growers is using uh, some of these robots and they've actually found they can get one more row of pots on a table because of the way they can space them just a little bit closer together. I like looking for technologies that any grower can afford. I mean, quarter million dollar machines are awesome and we all love them and some of us can afford them, not me. But uh, what about uh, an efficiency tool that you can have for say under $10,000? That's what we're looking at here. Not the transplanter, it's the scoreboard up above. The idea here is that it's wireless and it's all cloud-based. What you do is you uh, put a hang a, mo a module on the wall um, that is connected to the cloud and it's also connected wirelessly to a sensor on your, uh, your potting line that can capture all kinds of information about the output of the line that it's on. You program in, say, the desired amount of plants that you want to produce, and it will calculate how many you've done and how many are re remaining. You tell it how many you'd like to do an hour, and it will calculate how many you're actually doing per hour, and hence an efficiency rating. You'll know how that line is operating. It'll tell you how long it's been running, and really critically, over here in red, your downtime. How long has that machine not been running? And then lastly, it'll tell your employees what's the next order, a work order that's coming in. What do they need to be preparing as far as plugs and pots and things like that? Um, under $10,000, you can equip uh, the, your, uh, several lines, but maybe up to four different production lines with this. Now, the TV doesn't come with it, but the cool thing is, Go to Costco, buy any TV, Best Buy, you name it, and, uh, and it connects up to it wirelessly. Sustainable products, we're keeping our eyes open for those, and we found one here at ARU, a sustainable plant tag. And I really like the look of it because who doesn't love wood? These are real wood plant tags. They've got four different styles, four shapes of them that you can see here. And uh, what's cool is they are all, they're laser etched and they can all be custom done per whatever you would like. They've got an in-house design team that'll handle that. The minimum also is very low, about 2,000 tags is all you need to place a custom order. Made in America, uh, but 
if you need them either right away or you want to do a whole bunch of them, keep the price down a little bit uh, lower, they've got a uh, made in Asia option as well. But who wouldn't want the made in America version, right? And the cost, it's what everybody wants to know, roughly 25 cents a piece or thereabouts. But what price saving the planet, I ask you? Those are sustainable wood plant tags from Aru. You should know auto sticks by now. We're watching an auto sticks machine by Visser Horty Systems operating here in the background. Auto sticks is a way to take an unrooted cutting, stick it into a strip offshore where the sticking is less expensive, and then bring it into your greenhouse, put these cartridges on this uh, bed here, and the machine will automatically transplant them. Well, what we're looking at right now is the next innovation from auto sticks, which is the auto sticks media strips and Osvaldo get a close-up over here of what that looks like you see roots on there normally an auto sticks uh, cutting is unrooted this is a little bit of soilless media which yes is allowed into the country so it's shipped to you already rooted which is going to save you several weeks uh, and also make it easier to handle these strips also uh, Visser is redesigning the bed of this to make it uh, easier to uh, maintain and clean and do changeovers don't ask me the specifics on that they got pretty technical there but uh, in other words auto sticks is finding ways to make it uh, more efficient for you to get uh, young plants in the ground into your greenhouse and then out to your customers I think I've mentioned LEDs before here at uh, Cultivate 22. If I haven't, I'm going to now. So we're at the Philips booth, Signify booth, where they've got the Philips brand of LED lights. And the newest innovation we're looking at is called a grid light. We're used to seeing the, the uh, Signify lighting in a long strip, you know, like four foot long fluorescent tube style. This is a little simpler to use in a four by four configuration for uh, small growers, um, and even homeowners for that matter. It's uh, pre-configured, really set up automatically, only 120 volts, although you can go up to, to 270 if you want to. Um, it's dimmable, so you can adjust the amount of light coming out. Uh, but most importantly, the recipe they've chosen for the LEDs is based on 15 years of research that uh, Philips has been putting into LEDs, more than anybody I know of in the horticulture industry. So that is a, the grid light uh, here at Cultivate 22 from uh, Signify. We found a new biological control product that we think we're gonna, you're gonna be excited about here at Cultivate 22. It's from Coppert, which is uh, well known for their biological controls. And this one is called Icerid. Now, what is Icerid? Well, it's right in here. It is Iceria femicerosa, which is a beneficial fungus. And what this beneficial fungus does is gets inside the insect and kills it from the inside out. And I think that just sounds a uh, horror show cool. Now, your real question is, what insects does it get? Well, it gets uh, thrips, I got a list here, fungus gnats, and especially white flies. So you poinsettia growers are really gonna wanna know about Icerid. And the cool thing is that it was actually discovered on a white fly that was coated with some strange white powder and it probably wasn't feeling too well because it had this fungus on it. So that is a brand new biological fungicide. Uh, comes in two pound and 10 pound packages. Labeled, or excuse me, yeah, labeled for all 50 states now. Unfortunately, not for Canada. And as far as cannabis goes, uh, the label is state by state. Now, I'm teaching Osvaldo that some of the coolest stuff that uh, Cultivate is not up high, it's down under benches. Like uh, here in the Stuffy booth where they showed us something called Heat 2O. And uh, Heat 2O is an innovative fin uh, tube design where um, the top of it is taller than the bottom. It's taller than a standard fin tube, and it even has a bit of a wave in it to increase its surface area. And they say that you can get 30% more heat off of this design than off of a standard fin design. And another innovation, if you pan down to the end there, Osvaldo, you can show that they can bend it around the corner, where normally you'd have to have some uh, rubber tubing to make that corner. They can do it with the tube itself, so you get even uh, more heat cap capacity there. Uh, so that is the Heat 2.0 Fin heating system design from Stuppy.
We are here at the Blackmore booth at Cultivate 22 looking for new products and they've got sort of two of them. First is their, their air tray, which they've had out for a while. Air tray is a technology that really helps develop the best, most efficient root system without girdling on the bottom. And my hand model over here, Danny Takao, uh, who's not only a grower, but uh, part-time sales rep for uh, Blackmore, he's showing this uh, nice little pine tree and how beautiful those roots are without any girdling around the bottom. Thank you, Danny, very much. Uh, these come in size from uh, 20 millimeter up to two gallons. So pretty much any plant you can imagine could go in those. And another thing they talked about uh, here is, well, how do you package it for retail? Because the Elipod is a great technology, especially with the air tray uh, growing system for landscapers, for instance, or grower to grower kind of a thing. But they've been working on, I'm, let me grab one right here, a retail package that you could drop your air tray elipot into. Printed, comes in, would, could come in many different sizes. And it's a great way to take that efficient, uh, sustainable elipot to the retail and the end consumer. Whew, Osvaldo, we covered 47 miles according to my, uh, my fancy iPhone pedometer. Well, it wasn't that much, but it felt like it. And what did we bring you, 15 products or something like that? When really there had to be thousands out on the trade show floor. The only way to see them all is to be here yourself. So check your calendar for when Cultivate 22 is gonna be in 23, at which point it's Cultivate 23. But until then, uh, and until you read me in Grower Talks or Green Profit or Acres Online, I am Chris Bates saying, thanks for watching.